everyone welcome to this update video i really hope you're doing wonderful this morning today is the day of the total solar eclipse or the great american eclipse as it is dubbed in north america now the caribbean is not going to be seeing the total solar eclipse but parts of the caribbean will be seeing a partial solar eclipse later this afternoon so in this video i will be delving into all different locations and I'll be showing you how much of the sun is going to be covered and the time of each eclipse phase when the partial eclipse phase starts and the maximum eclipse for uh, various locations. So let's get into it. First, let's quickly talk about the weather because that is going to be a huge factor in whether or not you're going to be able to see the eclipse if it is going to be visible from your area. So let's get into it so as of right now looking at the infrared satellite imagery of the caribbean there is some cloud cover and even some showers across some areas such as the dominican republic for example parts of cuba uh some cloud cover across sections of the bahamas turks and caicos islands not a very dense coverage over there things not looking bad for puerto rico the virgin islands and through much of the lesser antilles but let me say it straight away most of uh, the southeastern caribbean will not see the eclipse whatsoever and it will not be noticeable if you don't have those eclipse glasses or uh, some other viewing equipment to actually see the eclipse you're not going to know it's happening uh, for other parts of the east caribbean such as the leeward islands even for the virgin islands and puerto rico as well and uh, that is because much of the sun is not going to be blocked out by the moon for those locations, even others where there's going to be more uh, of the moon covering the sun, it may not be that noticeable because the sun, I mean, we're talking about the astronomical body basically holding the solar system together. So it's very bright, it's very massive, and there needs to be a good amount of it actually covered for you to really see the dimness if it is not going to be cloudy. For Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, much is not really happening this morning. Pretty sunny, pretty much uh, clear skies across some areas, but that's going to change as we head to the afternoon. And parts of Central America, especially down to Costa Rica, Panama, experiencing some activity. And we see some thunderstorms uh, within the vicinity of Belize right there uh, building up this morning. So let's take a look at the rainfall forecast. Here we can see it. So for parts of Central America, again, Belize, Guatemala, even El Salvador, there could be a few uh, showers loitering around, even some thunderstorms. Same story as we head to southern Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama right there, and Colombia. For Venezuela and the Guyanas, a few showers possible today for sure. Things should be mostly on the quiet side for the ABC Islands, Trinidad, Tobago, most of Lesser Antilles. And as we head to the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, uh, as we saw, there is some cloud coverage within the area, so there could be some uh, showers and thunderstorms as we head through today. Jamaica, there could definitely be some shower activity later this afternoon. Same story for eastern Cuba, but central and western Cuba, uh, as well as the Cayman Islands, much of the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, uh, the Florida Peninsula, not likely to experience any uh, crazy rainfall activity as we're going to be heading through today. If there's going to be any rain, maybe just a little passing shower here or there. Now, winds are definitely going to be kicking up in the Caribbean. It's already windy in the south central and the southeast caribbean is gonna get even windier as we head into later today for most areas the bahamas turks and caicos islands cuba hispaniola the cayman islands jamaica or central america especially within the vicinity of the bay islands of honduras winds are going to be kicking up so uh, expect those winds over 20 maybe 25 knots in some areas and higher gusts of course now let's talk about the eclipse first and foremost what is a solar eclipse so that happens when the moon comes between earth and the sun and is perfectly aligned with both to cast its shadow on earth because essentially it is blocking the sunlight and yes some people may argue that no this is not possible because the sun is very much bigger yes it is bigger but it's also further and the further it is the smaller it is going to seem the beauty of it all is that the moon and the sun they appear to be the same size in the sky so that is why when there is a perfect alignment with uh all of these astronomical bodies an eclipse happens and if the moon is behind earth where it is actually earth coming between sun and the moon that is when a lunar eclipse happens and so within a solar eclipse we're focusing on solar eclipses so 
The moon casts two shadows, the penumbra and the umbra. Those of us in the penumbral shadow tend to witness a partial eclipse. And those of us in the umbral shadow will see the full total eclipse, which is only a narrow strip of Earth. So the total eclipse happens in the umbra, a partial eclipse happens in the penumbra. So now let's talk about the Caribbean. This is uh, a map that is going to have the different locations, how much of the sun is going to be blocked out, the duration of the eclipse for that particular area, and the time when each eclipse phase begins. So the time you're seeing here, this is in local time for the area. All right, so let us start. We've got Freeport in the Bahamas. We can see that a decent amount of the sun is going to be blocked out by the moon. Again, it's going to be a partial eclipse, but it's just a matter of how much of a partial eclipse you're going to be seeing. It starts at around 1.52 p.m. local time in the Bahamas. It peaks, meaning that there's going to be the maximum coverage for uh, Freeport at around 3.05 p.m. So that's going to be maximum eclipse for you guys. Havana, Cuba, also a decent amount of the sun is going to be blocked out for you. Uh, the partial eclipse begins at 1.39 p.m. and it's at its maximum at 2.53 p.m. Georgetown, the Cayman Islands. Now for Grand Cayman, uh, Little Cayman and Cayman Brack, it's going to be somewhat of a similar story here. So the eclipse is going to be starting at 12.40 p.m. and the maximum eclipse will be at 1.49 p.m. Montego Bay, Jamaica. So it's not going to be that impressive. Only around 20% of the sun is going to be covered by the moon. So the partial eclipse starts at 12.53 p.m. and it is at its maximum at 1.55 p.m. Again, you're only really going to notice that there's an eclipse happening with the proper viewing equipment. I shared the tint method uh, in one of my previous videos. I'm going to share it again at the end of this video. French Key, Turks and Caicos Islands, the partial eclipse starts to 11 p.m. and it will be at its maximum at 3.12 p.m. Next, we've got Haiti. So the partial eclipse begins at 2.13 p.m. It will be at the maximum at 3.09 p.m. Santo Domingo, we're seeing that less and less of the sun is going to be blocked out by the moon the further to the east we go because we're moving further and further away from the path of totality. So not going to be so impressive for the Dominican Republic, but it, uh, the partial eclipse starts at 2.24 p.m. and will be at its maximum at 3.12 p.m. Next, we've got Puerto Rico. Only around 6.5% of the sun is going to be blocked out, but the partial eclipse starts at 2.35 p.m. and it will be at its maximum at 3.18 p.m. So uh, we've got the Virgin Islands here next. Only 3.9% of the sun is going to be blocked out and the partial eclipse begins at 2.46 p.m. For Aruba, it's really not going to be any difference here for you guys. If you've got those eclipse glasses, you'll see a little piece of the sun go out for a very brief moment. The maximum eclipse will be at around 3.03 p.m. for you guys. So it's not going to be very impressive. And then go into uh, the other eastern islands, as I said, it's not going to be visible. I mean, it will be for Anguilla, St. Martin, so only a very small portion of the sun is going to be blocked out for you but we can see areas such as Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia not in that shade whatsoever so you guys will not be seeing the eclipse. Now we're heading back a little bit west we're going to San Andres so that's the uh, one of the Colombian islands offshore in Nicaragua so San Andres uh, there is going to be around 13% of the sun being blocked out for you the partial eclipse starts starts 12 39 p.m and it will be at its maximum at 1 35 p.m next we go to belize 40 percent of the sun is going to be blocked out so this is a decent amount here to look forward to uh the partial eclipse starts at 11 15 a.m and the maximum will be at 12 29 p.m we've got the bay islands off honduras the partial eclipse is going to be starting at 11 23 a.m so kind of similar to what is expected in belize and so again, the general path of totality is going to be traveling through Mexico, through the U.S. and Atlantic Canada today. So today is the day of the eclipse and the next total solar eclipse for North America 
will be 2045. Now it is very unfortunate because there is some severe weather that is going to be happening today. There is going to be a lot of cloud coverage obscuring the view of the sun in some of the areas in the path of totality, which is as I said, very, very unfortunate, but uh, hopefully for those individuals in those areas that will have, you know, the perfect view, I hope it will be a great day. I have a feeling that it will be an amazing day for so many people because out of every astronomical phenomenon, I really think that solar eclipses are the best. I mean, not even lunar eclipses, they're amazing as well, seeing the moon turn to red. But at the same time, a solar eclipse having day turn to night and uh, really just seeing the moon silhouette out there, it is a sight to behold. So uh, again, you will only be able to really notice that there is an eclipse happening in the Caribbean with the proper equipment. I shared the tint method. What I did, I bought some regular window tint. It's very inexpensive. I folded it around three, four times. Uh, the more you fold it, the more of the sunlight is going to be filtered and the, be uh, the better view there is going to be. And then I basically place that over my camera lens to capture the eclipse because, again, the sun is very bright. And do not look at it with the naked eyes. You're going to risk damaging your eyes. There's so many people who say, oh, they look for a few seconds and they look away. It is not safe. You're playing with fire here. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys in this update video. Unfortunately, for some locations, it is going to be cloudy this afternoon, especially those that may experience some shower activity. But hopefully, it's going to be those broken clouds so that there can be those moments where you actually see the eclipse happening whenever it starts for uh, that particular location. So, guys, that is basically what I wanted to share with you in this video. I hope you found it to be very informative. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.